All right. Back in the shop. Uh, earlier, we were on the three bolt flanges. Good. Got the work I needed to get done. Tomorrow, I need to go get some bolts for the fixture for Op2. Uh, no big deal. Get on the way home, just delays what I'm doing right now. We got two different bores going on on these guys. I got the plenum plate fixtures. Found some bolts to do Op2 here. It's Sunday. I can keep going all night. This stuff just never ends. So I have to force myself to walk away. Just started cooking with nub outside and there we go ADD brain uh, ADHD uh, yeah just I got a lot of stuff going and this is why it takes me so long to get things done for people but enjoy the show back to the three bolt flanges I got four by half flat bar this was a 12 foot bar this is the new way I decided to do it. I was getting them laser cut before out of the plate, which is the most efficient way to do it. Most people are pretty happy with laser cut parts. One company I got them from, they were a little rough. I didn't like the lead-ins and stuff. And Zealous Manufacturing did them last time. Did a great job, but the price point is just crazy right now on the material. So we're back to this the milling is slower but the thought is is if i'm welding and running the mill at the same time it's okay i can go slow so you guys want to know something i don't have a bandsaw i don't have a good bandsaw i always had a little jet one non-cooled pos i use a chop saw on aluminum not a chop saw, compound miter with a Diablo blade, but same thing. I don't have a way to cut stainless efficiently. So tomorrow, I mean, I could take it to work and ask my boss down there, but I don't like asking too many favors all the time. I need to get a saw, just been spending money on other things. So tomorrow I'm gonna take a field trip to Strife Manufacturing. I have a buddy who opened up a little shop. Well, got a new space for himself. He's been trying to do what I've been trying to build myself for a long time. Uh, we will visit him tomorrow and go use his saw while I drop off my plasma cutter for him to use. So just a little work trading going on. Just struggling through this stainless I've spent the last two evenings working on recipes I got some new cutters in Friday when I was gone and I got back was excited to try them I made some really good progress things were moving along and then at a third of the manufacturers recommendations for feed rate I kept losing corners and my roughing end mills started glowing and all of a sudden, boom, you're done. So to get these orders out that I have right now, I'm nursing through some old tore up four flute, half inch. Uh, I'm not gonna go over brands yet just cause maybe some of this stuff is my fault. Maybe it's not, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're, uh, Working our way through what I got going. I do have a couple resources I'm gonna lean on. I'm gonna uh, talk to my rep at Goering and see if he wants to come over and just see what's going on here. Cause he's always helped me out in drilling situations and other things. And I haven't really asked him much about milling. So I'm gonna see what they have up their sleeves and if he's got any good recommendations for me to tackle this, that'll be kind of a separate video and I'll go over what I was doing and then if I have success with him, I'll, I'll cover that in a separate video. But see, we got some 
shoot up in mills. I do have flanges going out to customers, so we're okay. Uh, just a little delay for those guys. And yeah, so that's, uh, that's gonna wrap this project up for right now. And when I shed some new light on what's going on here, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do a recap. Thanks for tuning in on this little project. So on the way home from work today, I stopped and got more tooling for this stainless situation we got going on here. Uh, I did not call my tool rep that I wanted to just because I needed to get going uh, sooner than later. And what I did was went by the my, my tooling guy's shop on the way home and when I started machining, I used helical end mills because they had a milling advisor that kind of taught me what was going on with speeds and feeds when I had no clue whatsoever what was going on. So I went, picked up helical, uh, expensive versus a lot of other stuff out there. And this could be a disaster or it could save my butt. Um, what we are also going to do now is go to the milling advisor and plug in all your parameters, your material engagement, what type of machining are you doing, and then it will give us some stuff for full slotting, uh, roughing, helical plunge, all these little factors. So I'm, I've bought a couple different cutters here. Um, actually this is a YG cobalt, not carbide. And the thought here is maybe it'll hold up and not be as brittle as the carbide. Carbide's brittle. And once you lose a corner, it is totally done. I think the cobalt may be geared up a little better for the Tormach just because you can't run this thing hot and heavy like carbides want you to. And it might be a solution for me in the future here. We got a five flute stub length because I have half inch material got a little bit longer length and I even got one where's this thing at with a chip breaker what is this guy I've never used one see that it's just got a couple serrations for a chip breaker not a full-blown rougher just a chip breaker anyway let's see what happens here Loading up a little bit. I'm going way light on my feed. They're telling me I can run this thing at like 39 inches a minute, which might make a better chip. The theory is not to wear out my cutter and kill it, so I'm just keeping it easy. So essentially I got a recipe that's working until it doesn't. Uh, this is gonna allow me to walk away for a minute take some measurements, and do programming on other parts. When this thing ain't working right, and your cutters aren't working right, and you're breaking shit left and right, it sucks. And, I don't know, it's giving me anxiety that really sucks. So, hopefully this stuff goes good. I'm trying not to push it too hard. I hate that noise, but whatever.
well that was fun check it out this thing i don't know i'm pretty stoked just got to set your height weld it from the back side and it's going to be good to go There we go. We got the flange cut, ready to go. This is actually a 16 valve plenum plate for the Nubworks do-it-yourself kit. And then we got now the flange where you can take a 16 valve or a 20 valve right there and create your own manifold. Uh, I always struggled on the plenum. Couldn't help anybody out because everybody has different things. This is an off-the-shelf thing from Skunk that you can buy their cast manifold. It even comes in a center feed. And now, with these parts, you can make whole manifolds. You can take a big port factory manifold, cut it off, Weld this guy on, fixture this guy up, and you would have a full manifold with the kit. You can have the throttle body clamps and whatever else, but we'll customize, do whatever we need to do. Next goal. Take the 24 valve VR6 flanges and get a VR6 option in there. I think I can make it fit. If not, well, we're gonna figure something out here, but we will get these things fitted in there and you will have a plenum option for your VR6. And Skunk has a stackable flange to increase the volume that you're gonna need for the, the 2.8 and the 3.2 so our 3.2 liter engines. <laughs>